Does size matter? Is it better to have a bigger one or is it better to have a smaller one and perfect your technique? We're talking about disc brake rotors. So today we're going to see if changing your disc brake rotor size alters the heat buildup that's associated with prolonged braking. To find out, we've come to a long descent in northern Spain. But before we go into the details of our test, if you like bike tech related content and videos like this, then well, you want to support the channel and help us improve what we do, it's dead easy. Just subscribe and turn on your notifications. Also, why not let us know your thoughts on rim brakes in the comments section down below? Because I mean, we love reading through those, don't we? I actually do. Oh yeah. So back to our descent. I will simply be going from our designated starting area, braking as I feel suitable, just as I would do under normal riding conditions. At the bottom of the descent, I'm gonna be waiting with my favorite piece, my infrared laser temperature gun, so that I can measure the, the temperature of the rotors when Alex comes down. We're gonna test 140 mil, 160 mil, and 180 millimeter rotors. All are sandwich constructions with aluminum cores. Will the rotor size drastically change the level of heat buildup, or are the differences small enough that it's only when you do an in-depth critical analysis and computer modeling that it's noticeable? Right, quick run through my bike setup. I'm running the latest Shimano Dura-A's, the R9200, and installed on the calipers are resin pads. Now, you might notice I have a 160 millimeter rotor fitted on the front, and it is the Ultegra rotor. Now, the 140 and the 180 rotor are Dura-A slash XTR. Now, the difference between those two types of rotors is that, well, this one just has little silver pieces here instead of the special black coating, which is on the Dura-A's. Now, there's a significant difference in the cost, but not in the weight or the brake performance. Yeah, a little top tip for you there. So, while I get set up, ride all the way to the top, ready to start the experiment, let's have Dr. Ollie give us a rundown of some of the science. There are two main reasons why we use larger or smaller rotors. The first is leverage. The rotor effectively acts as a lever, transferring the force from the brake caliper to the wheel. The bigger the rotor, the greater the leverage, meaning less force is required when the rider pulls on the brake lever. The second reason is heat dissipation. A larger rotor has a greater surface area and can therefore dissipate heat more effectively. Now on long descents, heat buildup is inevitable, but it only becomes a problem if the rate of heat building up on the rotor is greater than the rate at which it can be dissipated. Before we proceed, I'm just gonna get a baseline reading of what the rotors are before Alex has descended on them. So. 18.9 degrees, which is basically the ambient temperature of the air right now. So as I'm just cycling my way back up to the top, let me just explain that in theory, the 140 millimeter rotor should get hotter. Quite simply, there's less surface area and there's less material in order to try and dissipate the heat that builds up. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what the results are. As always, the uh, consistence and constants we're trying to keep are that the rotors are at the normal ambient temperature and we start our experiment. Right, we're nearly there. Spin around, we'll see you in a second. 160, see what happens. I love these downhill tests. Right, measure, measure. Right, that's coming out, it's gone 56, but it's cooling down rapid in 40. Oh, it's it, down it, it cools quick, I mean, that shows you the heat dissipation of the, of the rotor system. It's gone down to 35 now. 140s, off we go, lovely. Oh, 
Oh, we're back again. Right, measure up. I hope it's hotter. Theory says it should be. No. What have we got? Well, it's 54 degrees. Is that basically the same? Basically, I think within the margin of error, that's basically the same, 54 degrees. Interesting. It's dropped to 36 now, 35, 34, so 34, we're talking, 33. Yeah, within the same sort of realms of the 160. Yeah, so, I, mean, I mean, 54 versus what, 56, so it's like, I think that's within the realms of error of our experiment. Well, but and, it, and for what I can do in terms of being consistent on the runs. Yeah, I All think right. that's, there's very little difference there. Well, I'm, I'm intrigued to see if the big boy, 180, yeah. plays a big part in it. Well, um, let's, let's, let's see. I hope so. It's a lot of work, keep changing all this stuff around. Let's, let's change them over, right. come on. This is how cycling should be done. It's the, road, it's the road bike equivalent of a mountain bike uplift. Before we go any further, quick disclaimer on 180 rotors such as this. Brands make 180 rotors because they're used on mountain bikes, but you're unlikely to have manufacturers recommend that they're used on road bikes. In fact, some strongly advise against it and it might invalidate your warranty if you fit these to your bike. To find out if that's the case, you're best off checking with the manufacturer of your bike and then you can make a decision from there. But we're gonna use them because we want to find out if they do make a difference and get a feel for what they're actually like. And to do that, we're gonna use a special adapter so that we can fit a 180 rotor. This is made by fellow YouTuber Peak Torque and cost us 45 English pounds. Um, looks like a good bit of kit. So we're gonna fit that on and see how we go. So um, I'm just having to Google how to fit it to make sure we do the right thing. Um, yeah. Hundred and eighty mil big boy, all uh, talked up, ready to hit the road. Let's do it. So one eighties, well one eighty. Here we go. GMBN, watch out. Got my big disc brake rotor. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Breaking, coming to a stop. Okay, so Ollie, what have we got? So that's coming in at a gear 53 is the highest, but it's cooling down. So comparable peak figure to it's the other rotors. It's about the same on all three, the temperature the rotor's got to. Yeah. But what I can see here is the 140 cooled down at a noticeably slower rate, whereas this has dropped down to 29, like oh, real quick. It's now 26, 24, 23. It's like cooling down, it's just cooled down way quicker, which kind of makes sense. Like, yeah. there's a lot more surface area going on. Yeah, I'm totally with you, I agree. Now, I've it's already- It's interesting though, that the peak temp was like roughly the same across all three. Like. Yes, yeah, so I already explained on my journey back up to the top that using the smaller rotor, I could noticeably feel I had to put a little bit more input at the lever. And I've got to say, it was the complete reverse for using the larger disc brake rotor, which, you know, the theory says, larger rotor, more leverage. And I did have to, well, it was noticeable how I could apply a little bit less force at the lever to stop the same. Okay, Holly, we should probably have a little bit of a, a debrief on this, I should say. Yes. Yeah. I, I, so first, the disadvantages of bigger rotors. Okay, right? hit me. Firstly, the weight. Yeah. Tiny weight penalty. Um, that includes the additional brackets that you need, um, especially on the rear, you can remove that bracket when you go down to a 140, and the rotor itself. It's not much, you're talking, you know, 20, 30 grams, yeah. not much at all, but might be important to you. Next, aerodynamics. Yeah. Smaller rotor, smaller frontal area, but also, it's a disc on your bike that's spinning and sloshing the air. A smaller one, it's less of an aero penalty. Yeah. And the other thing, this is a, a personal thing, I just think looks. I think the smaller rotor 
looks neater than the bigger rotor. But that's, you know, that's about it really. Okay, right, so advantages. Clearly, using a larger disc brake rotor gives you an advantage in terms of all-out braking performance. It's simple physics, it's a bigger lever. Yeah, we've, we've, well, you did an excellent video in the past where we showed your stopping distance is reduced yeah. by using a bigger rotor. Not much, but Not it much, is reduced. Not much, but it's enough. And then, as I mentioned earlier, a larger rotor, you've got a lot more material. Therefore, the dissipation of the heat is far more effective. It takes longer time to build up heat in the rotor of that size. Yep. Also, something I think we should take into consideration is the wear of the rotor is going to spread over a larger area. Now, this might not make a huge difference over a short period of time, but in my head, I think it's clear to say a 180mm rotor is going to last a significant period of time longer than a small 140. Yes, and our sort of little backyard test didn't really show a significant difference between them. But, you know, if the difference, that just means the difference is small yeah. on a day to day basis, but it's that aggregation of marginal gains thing. If that rotor wears 5% slower or it's able to dissipate heat 2% quicker over the course of you know, one ride, one descent, you're not going to see much, but then over the course of the lifespan of that rotor, yeah. that will add up a huge amount. The little ones, you can wear through them pretty quick. Yeah. You can cook a little 140 rotor, if you, especially if you're a bigger rider and you're really hammering it on a descent, yeah, you can go through them pretty quick. Now, at which point we get onto cost. Uh, yeah, cost, in my experience, any rotors that I've looked at comparable prices, there is no difference between a 140, a 160, and a 180. So in theory, you're getting better value for money the bigger rotor you go for. Yeah, the same. <laughs> How does that work? It's like the same material. I don't know. Um, now, as you mentioned, in my experience, bigger riders are the people who I feel could benefit the most from going for a larger disc brake rotor. Yeah. And the main group set manufacturers at present don't tend to offer anything larger than a 160, do they? No, and I think there's a serious argument to offer 180 rotors, maybe even bigger for bigger riders, because not everyone is a 60 kilogram pro climber. And, you know, there's a lot of fit guys out there, rowers, rugby players, and such like, who ride up mountains and they're 90, 100 kilos. And in that instance, you know, maybe a 180 is gonna be a much better solution for those people. Well, I'll tell you what I'm keen to find out is whether everyone at home thinks that we should try and re repeat this experiment indoors see how hot we can get disc brakes what do we need a big lathe yes i mean if you want to see us put disc brake rotors onto a lathe and heat them up till they i don't know nearly explode and melt i want to i want to see glowing rotors yeah let us know in the comment section down below if we get enough comments and likes we'll maybe consider it shall we yeah um okay so final conclusion of this we found out larger disc brake rotors does have a small impact on the temperature of your brakes but it's not significant out on the road in my experience, I'm going to say I'm going to go for a larger rotor in many situations. Yep. How about you? Uh, I think in certain applications, time trial bike and racing bike on the flat, 140s because of the aero. But yeah, I think if I was coming away for a week in the mountains, I'd go 160s personally. All right. Just, yeah. Well, I hope everyone's enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do give it a big thumbs up. Let us know in the comments if you want to see us try and melt this straight rotors on a lathe. And, um, well, I think I'm just going to enjoy this 180mm rotor on the descent. I'll, um, I'll see you at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs>